Yasa alternatively, Yasa, Yasak, Jazag, Zasig, Mongolian, Izasig Yehe Zasig is, was the 40 millenary oral law code of the Mongols declared in public in Bukhara by Genghis Khan de facto law of the Mongol Empire even though the law was kept secret and never made public. The Yasa seems to have its origin as decrees issued in war times. Later, these decrees were codified and expanded to include cultural and lifestyle conventions. By keeping the Yasa secret, the decrees could be modified and used selectively. It is believed that the Yasa was supervised by Genghis Khan himself and his stepbrother Shihihutag who was then High Judge in Mongolian, Ulsan Izargak of the Mongol Empire. Genghis Khan appointed his second son Chagatai, later Chagatai Khan to oversee the execution of the laws. Topic. Overview The Yasa decrees were thought to be comprehensive and specific, although no Mongolian scroll or codex has been found. There are records of excerpts among many chronicles including Makrizi, Vartung, and Ibn Battuta, among others. Moreover, copies may have been discovered in Korea as well. The absence of any physical document is historically problematic. Historians are left with secondary sources, conjecture and speculation, which describes much of the content of this overview. Historical certainty about the Yasa is weak compared to the much older code of Hammurabi 18th century BCE or the Edicts of Ashoka, 3rd century BCE. The latter were carved for all to see on stone plinths, 12 to 15 meters high, which were located throughout Ashoka's empire, today's India, Nepal, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. The Yasa, thought to be written in the Uyghur Mongolian script and scribed on scrolls, was preserved in secret archives and known only to and read only by the royal family. Beyond being a code of laws, the Yasa may have included philosophical, spiritual, and mystical elements, and thus may have been thought of as a quasi-sacred or magic text. The exoteric aspect of Yasa outlined laws for various members of the Mongol community such as soldiers, officers, and doctors. The Yasa aimed at three things, obedience to Genghis Khan, a binding together of the nomad clans, and the merciless punishment of wrongdoing. It concerned itself with people, not property. Unless a man actually confessed, he was not judged guilty. The purpose of many decrees was probably to eliminate social and economic disputes among the Mongols and future allied peoples. Among the rules were no stealing of livestock from other people, sharing food with travelers, no abduction of women from other families, and no defection among soldiers. It represented a day to day set of rules for people under Mongol control that was strictly enforced. The Yasa also addressed and reflected Mongol cultural and lifestyle norms. Death via decapitation was the most common punishment save for when the offender was of noble blood, in which case the offender was killed without shedding blood. Even minor offences were punishable by death. For example, a soldier would be put to death if he did not pick up something that fell from the person in front of him. Those favoured by the Khan were often given preferential treatment within the system of law and were allowed several chances before being punished. As Genghis Khan had set up an institution that ensured complete religious freedom, people under his rule were free to worship as they pleased, as long as the laws of the Yasa were observed. Topic. Conjectural laws Many sources provide conjectures about the actual laws of the Yasa. The Yasa was so influential that other cultures appropriated and adapted portions of it, or reworked it for ends of negative propaganda. For instance, the number of offences for which the death penalty was given was famous among contemporaries of the Yasa, however, Harold Lamb's Genghis Khan, the emperor of all men quotes a translation by François Pétis de la Croix. Although unable to come upon a complete list of the laws, he compiled several from Persian and Arabic chroniclers, Fras Rubriquis, and Giovanni da Pian del Carpine, among other sources. Those laws are listed here. It is ordered to believe that there is only one God, creator of heaven and earth, who alone gives life and death, riches and poverty as pleases him, and who has over everything an absolute power. A different version states that there was liberty to worship God in whatever way suitable, Plantagenet Somerset Fry. 
he Chinggis Khan, ordered that all religions were to be respected and that no preference was to be shown to any of them. All this he commanded in order that it might be agreeable to heaven. al makrizi Leaders of a religion, lawyers, physicians, scholars, preachers, monks, persons who are dedicated to religious practice, the muezzin this latter appearing to be from the later period of Kabilai Khan unless this was further translated there had been no specific reference made to any muezzin and cities including mosques were leveled, physicians and those who bathe the bodies of the dead are to be freed from public charges. al makrizi it is forbidden under penalty of death that anyone, whoever he be, shall be proclaimed emperor unless he has been elected previously by the princes, khans, officers, and other Mongol nobles in a general council. Forbidden to ever make peace with a monarch, a prince or a people who have not submitted. It is apparent they presented certain proposals to the different states or kingdoms that existed that they should participate with them. The ruling that divides men of the army into tens, hundreds, thousands, and ten thousands is to be maintained. He put leaders, princes, bogatirs, generals, noyans at the head of the troops and appointed commanders of thousands, hundreds, and tens. al makrizi This arrangement serves to raise an army in a short time, and to form the units of commands. The moment a campaign begins, each soldier must receive his arms from the hand of the officer who has them in charge. The soldier must keep them in good order, and have them inspected by his officer before a battle. He ordered his successors to personally examine the troops and their armament before going to battle, to supply the troops with everything they needed for the campaign and to survey everything even to needle and thread, and if any of the soldiers lacked a necessary thing that soldier was to be punished. al makrizi Forbidden, under death penalty, to pillage the enemy before the general commanding gives permission, but after this permission is given the soldier must have the same opportunity as the officer, and must be allowed to keep what he has carried off, provided he has paid his share to the receiver for the emperor. He ordered that soldiers be punished for negligence, and hunters who let an animal escape during a community hunt he ordered to be beaten with sticks and in some cases to be put to death. Miron or Merkwind may appear excluded from some accounts, can be a more restricted Siberian originating practice, but seems genuine. To keep the men of the army exercised, a great hunt shall be held every winter. On this account, it is forbidden any man of the empire to kill from the month of March to October, deer, bucks, roebucks, hares, wild ass and some birds. Forbidden, to cut the throats of animals slain for food, when an animal is to be eaten, its feet must be tied, its belly ripped open and its heart squeezed in the hand until the animal dies, then its meat may be eaten, but if anyone slaughter an animal after the Mohammedan fashion, he is to be himself slaughtered. al makrizi women were not supposed to slaughter animals this way, possibly due to being weaker, there is no prohibition in the yasa. It is permitted to eat the blood and entrails of animals though this was forbidden before now. Every man who does not go to war must work for the empire, without reward, for a certain time. The man in whose possession a stolen horse is found must return it to its owner and add nine horses of the same kind, if he is unable to pay this fine, his children must be taken instead of the horses, and if he have no children, he himself shall be slaughtered like a sheep. al makrizi in the versions where the provisions appear the method of execution is likened to sheep therefore as in accordance it may be presumed with the law for the slaughter of animals it is unclear in another version as of when their bodies should be cut in two parts for lesser thefts the punishment shall be, according to the value of the thing stolen, a number of blows of a staff 7, 17, 27, up to 700. But this bodily punishment may be avoided by paying nine times the worth of the thing stolen. Another older version mentions no punishment for thefts under the value mentioned, it is not so specified. No subject of the empire may take a Mongol for servant or slave. Every man, except in rare cases, must join the army. Whoever gives food or clothing to a captive without the permission of his captor is to be put to death. al makrizi Whoever finds a runaway slave or captive and does not return him to the person to whom he belongs is to be put to death. al makrizi the word translated as slave, means captive taken for labor, 
The opponents of the Mongols were usually regarded by them as facing a punishment for resisting the universal principles, the Mongol system, or what it aspired to via its codes and measures. The concept was passed on also to their descendants, based on concepts of sedentary populations who degrade the people and criminal tribes, criminal already often simply by their concept of resisting to the above referred Mongol system. The word is bowl, linked to modern bult, banned for tying, booch. Ch as in chava in Hebrew is in the modern Mongolian both associated with the type of binding and process used in capture as a verb where it is translated as meaning slave. However other lands differ in meaning of slave, though allied. The law required the payment of a bride price. Though not mentioned in other sources, it may be that this is a dowry reference, given that the bride price is usually a custom restricted to specific Mongol tribes but that may have appeared later. This may have been practiced earlier, while Chinggis Khan himself had never followed this custom, nor is it much if at all, referred to in the Nuv's Tobchan Mongolan. The bride price might have been considered as a useful deterrent to trade in women, or simply a modernizing experimental inversion from a dowry. However, the Tatar neighbors traded in women, which was prohibited, it is reported by the Yasa, and that marriage between the first and second degrees of kinship is forbidden. A man may marry two sisters, or have several concubines, however, under Buddhism and shamanism there was a progressive tendency for a marriage ceremony. Some Buddhist forms revived some casualty without marriage. The women should attend to the care of property, buying and selling at their pleasure, specifically in another version, Os Mongois, by a Portuguese publisher of summarized histories of culture. The law is quoted as defining trade as their sphere. There is no exclusion from military participation, but this was reported more popular among Tatars as according to Islamic law, which was only possible to follow via Sufism. Men should occupy themselves only with hunting and war. Children born of a concubine are to be considered as legitimate, and receive their share of the heritage according to the disposition of it made by the father. The distribution of property is to be carried out on the basis of the senior son receiving more than the junior, the younger son inheriting the household of the father. The seniority of children depends upon the rank of their mother, one of the wives must always be the senior, this being determined chiefly by the time of her marriage. After the death of his father, a son may dispose of the father's wives, all except his mother, he may marry them or give them in marriage to others. All except the legal heirs are strictly forbidden to make use of any of the property of the deceased. Vermadsky an adulterer is to be put to death without any regard as to whether he is married or not. al makrizi the Yasser prescribes these rules, to love one another, not to commit adultery, not to steal, not to give false witness, not to be a traitor, and to respect old people and beggars. Whoever violates these commands is put to death. Mahakair, here are the laws of God which they call Iasax which were given to them, G288, first, that they love one another, second, that they not commit adultery, not steal, not bear false witness, not betray anyone, and that they honor the aged and the poor. And should perpetrators of such crimes be found among them, they should be killed, Grigor of a Kank. If two families wish to be united in marriage and have only young children, the marriage of these children is allowed, if one be a boy and the other a girl. If the children are dead, the marriage contract may still be drawn up. It is forbidden to bathe or wash garments in running water during thunder. Whoever intentionally lies, or practices sorcery, or spies upon the behavior of others, or intervenes between the two parties in a quarrel to help the one against the other is also to be put to death. Al Makrizi intentional liars being included in this section in one of the versions, however, it is not as definable in practice, and may refer to methodical lying, which also appears in areas of earlier Asiatic influence in Europe, but becomes particularly defined together with a Germanic version which may have legal undertones, and a Latin practicality. It is a version intended to cause grievous harm to people and damage them, and further particularly as a means of sabotage, but this is not completely clear. It can also have an aspect of those who practice lying with frivolous purposes. Officers and chieftains who fail in their duty, or do not come at the summons of the Khan are to be slain, especially in remote districts. If their offense be less grave, they must come in person before the Khan. Whoever is guilty of sodomy is also to be put to death al 
Urinating in water or ashes is punishable by death. Al Makrizi It was forbidden to wash clothing until completely worn out. Al Makrizi He forbade his people to eat food offered by another until the one offering the food tasted of it himself, even though one be a prince and the other a captive. He forbade them to eat anything in the presence of another without having invited him to partake of the food. He forbade any man to eat more than his comrades, and to step over a fire on which food was being cooked or a dish from which people were eating. Al Makrizi One may not dip their hands into water and must instead use a vessel for the drawing of water. Al Makrizi When the wayfarer passes by a group of people eating, he must eat with them without asking for permission, and they must not forbid him in this. Al Makrizi It was forbidden to show preference to a sect, or to put emphasis on a word. When talking to someone, do not speak to them with a title, calling them by their name. This applies to even the Khan himself. Al Makrizi At the beginning of each year, all the people must present their daughters to the Khan so he may choose some of them for himself and his children. Al Makrizi Also that minors not higher than a cart wheel may not be killed in war. Also abduction of women and sexual assault and or abuse of women was forbidden punishable by death. In cases of murder, punishment for murder, one could ransom himself by paying fines which were, for a Mohammedan 40 golden coins balish, and for a Chinese, one donkey. Mirod or Merkwand The Khan established a postal system so that he might quickly learn about events of the empire. He ordered his son Chagatai to see that the Yasser was observed. Al Makrizi Vakovinsky reports that the Yasa begins with an exhortation to honor men of all nations based on their virtues. This pragmatic admonition is borne out by the ethnic mixture created by Genghis Khan in the Mongolian medieval army for purpose of unity, Mongolan, the United Mongol Warriors. The origin of the word Mongol, Mong, means brave. Thus, at the time, it may have meant as much an army of the brave as an army from or made up of people from Mongolia. Genghis Khan consulted teachers of religions, such as imams and probably rabbis and Christian priests, in compiling his law codex. <laughs> <laughs> After Genghis Khan Agedei Khan, the third son of Genghis Khan and the second Great Khan, proclaimed the Great Yasa as an integral body of precedence, confirming the continuing validity of his father's commands and ordinances while adding his own. Agedei codified rules of dress, conduct of the Kurultais, the military council. His two immediate successors followed the tradition of the Yasa. The Mongols who lived in various parts of the empire began to add laws that were more appropriate to their areas. Topic. Present day influence In the modern Turkish language, as used presently in Turkey, the word law is yasa, and the adjective legal is yasal. The word for a constitution, including the constitution of Turkey, is anayasa. Mother law. Topic. Etymology The word yasa or yasa is existent in both Mongolic and Turkic languages. It is believed that the word comes from the Mongolian verb zas or yas, which means to set in order. Chereg zasik is a phrase commonly found in old Mongolian texts like the secret history that means to set the soldiers in order, in the sense of rallying the soldiers before a battle. The supreme executive body of the present-day Mongolian government is called the Zasig in Gazar, which means the place of Zasig, the place of order. Zasig during the Qing dynasty referred to native provincial governors in Mongolia. The local office called Zasig in Gazar served as a court of the first instance and included secretaries and other officials. The verb Zasiglak means to govern. In Mongolian, the Turkic verb yars, which means to spread, 
probably originated in Yuga Turkic and was firstly used by Yuga Turks. Topic. See also. History of law. Equals equals notes.